Jerry is in Bend, Oregon. Hey, Jerry, how are you? Doing great, Dave. How about yourself? Oh, better than I deserve. What's up? Well, got to say you're a predictable guy on that answer, but um, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. So a little bit of background on my business. Um, I started a welding business uh, right after college about four years ago, and um, things are going really well. Last year, we did about $600,000 in revenue. This year, we'll probably do $1 million to $1.2 million in revenue. And probably, wow. Yeah, thanks. And probably we'll net around $400,000. So kind of what we specialize in, we build and sell flatbeds for pickup trucks, which are the aftermarket upgrades that replaces the stock pickup bed. Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of got two divisions of the business. One of them, we build and sell the flatbeds out of our shop here in Bend. And then secondly, we license our product designs and marketing process to other welding shops around the country. So my question is actually specific to that, um, just because... So I was wondering, uh, on that side of the business, the licensing side, how to make the vetting process better for our new dealers. Because um, our, our dealer success rate, in terms of we require a certain quota of units to be sold for them to stay in the program, it's not nearly as high as I would like it to be. So I thought it, you'd be a great guy to answer this question, since it's kind of similar to your ELP programs, um, kind of a similar model where you know we find qualified welding shops, they use our process to build, market, and sell these beds. Um, and, and it has, um, improved a little bit, but it's kind of around 50 to 60% is what our success rate is. The other 40% don't make the cut. So just what are your thoughts on making the betting process a little better for our, what uh, have you figured out that the difference is between the ones that make it and the ones that don't? Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing, and we've, we've already changed this was, um, we require everybody to be full time with a welding shop for at least a year. Okay, so you um, can't make it unless you've been. You don't have a chance of making it on average unless you've been open a year. Okay, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, part, you you tried some part timers and they don't cut it. Correct. Yep. So no, no question. That, that makes sense. Okay. Yep. What else have you learned? Um, the other thing that we've learned is it's actually kind of an, an odd problem where you know on the one side there's guys that aren't established enough and they just you know they just don't seem to know enough about business and sales to make it work and on the other side of the coin we've licensed some bigger shops you know doing five ten million a year um, and those guys you know some of them had made it but some of them it's just like I don't know if we didn't charge them enough money and they just you know kind of forgot about it because you know in, in their case what we charge for the licensing fees are about you know, two days worth of revenue for them. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, they, they get in and then they just kind of forget about it sort of thing. So I'm kind of looking for, you know, do you think we should raise the price and, um, you know, people will take it more seriously if we raise the price. Cause there's some of them that, you know, we charge the licensing fees are five grand to get in. Um, and some of the guys, you know, we, they get in and they, they make $50,000 profit their first year. And so then they pay you, uh, they pay you additional per unit. Yeah, the way that we, we don't do a royalty percentage, we basically just have them under contract to buy certain parts on a per unit basis from us. And then we also have a, a small annual renewal fee of 750 bucks per dealer. Um, so it's five grand up front. They, they are under contract to buy a minimum of about $3,000 worth of parts from us per year and then $750 to renew. Yeah. So um, probably tiered pricing would help you. Um, the okay. way you say based on their gross revs, you say, you know, the entry point is one to 5 million in gross revs and that's 5,000 bucks and you buy our parts from us. If you're five to 10 million, we expect you to do more volume. So we're going to charge you 20,000. If you're, uh, 10 million and above, we're going to charge you 40,000. Okay. Yeah. And, um, because, you know, because what you want is you want someone that wants this, you want the product line to be a reasonable mix. You don't want to be two percent of someone's product line, right? You, you want to be you want to be one of the things they do. And I don't know what percentage of the product line it is, but out of their gross, you want them to be making something. And if they pay a little bit more for it, as you said, they're going to value it. And then that may flesh out that they're just you know they were just going to put they wanted to take you off the market so you weren't going to be at the competitor and put you on the shelf. That's probably what happened to you on a couple of the big ones. Uh huh. They said, this is a good process. We're probably not going to do many of them, but we sure don't want the guy across town doing them. So we're going to take it and put it on the shelf for five grand. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. 
Yeah, they, they were taking you off the market. Du, du, you got dusty on the shelf, you did. So, right. yeah, that's that's happened to us before um, where people want to buy ads, as an example, and so that they can hold that category and keep the competitor from getting the category. They really weren't interested in a long-term partnership with the Ramsey brand. They just didn't want someone else to have one. Uh-huh. And we've run into that a time or two. Um, and so that's become part of the vetting process. So sometimes uh, price changes will weed out uh, that kind of stuff because it's just too expensive to put you on the dusty shelf then uh, relative to revenues. Uh, and if you're not going to do anything with it, we don't want you. But if you're going to do something with it, forty grand's a great deal for a twenty million dollar business. Right. Yeah. So how do we? Because one of the things we do is we we have everybody run through a demo before. You know, I'm usually the guy that's on the interview call with them to vet the dealers. Um, they go through the demo, which kind of explains how it works. It explains the pricing structure. So how do you propose, or what's your idea on? You know, because if, if we say it's tier based on revenue, obviously the temptation for these businesses would be to, to fib on the amount of revenue they're doing. I wouldn't um, I wouldn't bring that up before I, you know, early in the call, we're qualifying. We're going, hey, what's your all's gross revenue? Right. And then we're okay. going to talk about, okay, well, in your area, our pricing is this. Okay. But I wouldn't present a tiered on the on your website. Right. You know, they got to okay. find that out because that way that, you know, you just find out what's going on. Hey, so how much gross are y'all doing? How, how are you, are yeah. you doing enough to even fool with this? You may not be big enough to do it. And then they, then they'll brag. Right. Yeah. And then, okay. uh, you know, so, but I, I, you know, the other thing you want to do is this, um, in, in marketing or in sales, the most powerful sale you can make is a negative sale, which is, uh, is worm fishing. You make them want it and then you take it away from them and make them chase it. And so, right. you know, we want to, you know, we've got to ask a few questions to see if you qualify to be one of our dealers, not on one knee. Would you please, 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 please be one of our dealers. We need yeah. to see if you actually fit in. And you know, the truth is that that's also the truth because you don't want certain kinds. You've already established. You don't want part timers. And we've already established we don't want a large one that puts us on the shelf, doesn't do anything with it, because we're just a, you know, we're, we're, like you said, one day's revenue or something, that kind of deal. So that's what you want to avoid. But, hey, man, really cool. I love your business. I'm proud of you. That's a great job. And you're being really creative on how to grow it without having to do all the welding. That's pretty cool. Very, very nice job, man. This is the Entree Leadership Podcast.